While poor food is in the hands of consumers, there are many opportunities for harmful bacterial contaminants to be introduced. There are many bacteria that can be responsible. Identifying them can help us determine if a bacterial contaminant could cause illness and where the contamination may have occurred. To help researchers identify the contaminant and its origins, they can look at genetic information carried by the DNA of bacteria found in food. Today, we will focus on the method called whole genome sequencing, which allows us to examine a complete genetic fingerprint of bacteria. We will explain how whole genome sequencing is used to identify and characterize foodborne pathogens, such as those belonging to the Bacillus series group. The Bacillus series group contains 18 genetically similar species. Some of these species are beneficial and are used as bioinsecticides and probiotics, while others cause illnesses in humans, including foodborne illness. Pathogenic bacteria are usually inactivated in food by using high temperature or other treatments. However, Bacillus species can form sturdy spores, which are resilient and can outlast high heat intended to kill foodborne pathogens. It is therefore important to distinguish among harmless from pathogenic members of the bacteria to avoid exposing consumers to food contaminated with pathogenic Bacillus series group strains. Accurate identification of Bacillus series group species and identification of toxin genes encoded in their genome plays an important role in this process. This information can be obtained using whole genome sequencing, which gives researchers a complete picture of genetic information carried by bacterial genome. Most bacteria have a genome which consists of a single circular DNA molecule containing several million nucleotide base pairs. The specific sequence of nucleotides in a genome encodes for specific proteins. The Bacillus series group proteins that we are specifically interested in are enterotoxins, which can cause the symptoms of diarrheal foodborne illness. In order to comprehensively detect sequences encoding these proteins, we first need to sequence the bacterial genome. Whole genome sequencing technology makes it possible for us to sequence millions or even billions of bases from multiple bacterial isolates at the same time. The first step of this process involves obtaining DNA from bacterial isolates obtained from food. After DNA is extracted from each isolate, it is broken into smaller fragments to create libraries of DNA fragments. Fragments from each isolate library are then barcoded using short, unique sequences or barcodes. Barcoded libraries can then be pooled and sequenced in a single sequencing run. During a sequencing run, 100 to 300 base pair long sequences of barcoded DNA fragments are generated. These sequences are called reads. Sequencing takes place by synthesis of complementary DNA strands, in which an enzyme polymerase synthesizes a strand with fluorescently labeled nucleotides. Each nucleotide is labeled with a specific color that is recorded by a camera. A sequence of detected colors is then translated to a nucleotide sequence. Once sequencing is completed, sequencing reads that carry the same barcode and therefore belong to the same bacterial isolate are grouped together and analyzed. Reads are first assessed for quality to determine whether they can be used for further analysis. After passing quality control, reads are assembled in the order in which they appear in the bacterial genome. A commonly used approach is de novo assembly, which doesn't require any prior knowledge of the bacterial identity. De novo assembly refers to the process of assembling short reads into longer continuous sequences or contigs without the use of a reference genome. Once the genome is assembled, we can explore its content and utilize it to undercover bacterial strains, identify and examine whether these contain genes encoding for toxins. Bacillus series group isolates can possess a variety of genes which enable bacteria to produce toxins. These toxins are responsible for foodborne illness symptoms, including diarrhea and vomiting. However, not all Bacillus series group isolates carry toxin genes that would allow for them to cause foodborne illness. Identifying toxin genes can therefore help us predict whether an isolate is likely to be detrimental to human health. In addition to toxin genes, we can also identify genes responsible for antimicrobial resistance to inform us on the selection of antibiotics for the treatment of severe cases of foodborne illness. Information obtained through whole genome sequencing analysis can also be interpreted in the context of the source and date of isolation collection, and information collected through interviews. In the case of suspected outbreaks, we can use genomic information to determine the relatedness between isolates and narrow down the potential source of contamination. We can then work to establish preventative and mitigative measures, such as improving hygiene to limit potential foodborne outbreaks. For the highly related Bacillus series group, whole genome sequencing offers a more accurate and complete picture over traditional microbiology approaches due to the high similarity of isolates. 
Whole genome sequencing allows for higher resolution to identify differences between bacillus series group isolates. The incorporation of sequencing approaches can aid in monitoring bacterial contamination in food and evaluate the potential impact the bacteria could have on human health. Understanding what's in our environment and food is crucial in keeping food and consumers safe.